The Gateway 2 process for high-rise residential buildings has caused serious delays across the construction industry. But the real reason for these delays isn't what you think. It's not just about missing drawings or slow responses from the regulator. The real reason is the lack of competence, but not the kind you expect. Let me explain. My name is Eugene Korch. I teach and practice facade engineering. This video is based on real conversation with members of Institute for Architectural Science and Technology and wider industry from facade engineers, contractors, and manufacturers who went through the Gateway 2 process and on feedback we've seen from the building safety regulator. So what does competence actually mean? To borrow an idea from Professor Joseph Stibrick, only about 10% of our job is knowing what needs to be done. Another 30% is being able to explain it to others. And the remaining 60% is convincing people to actually do it. When you look at it that way, it becomes clear what the building safety regulator means when they say, knowing how to build a compliant building, it's not the same as knowing how to demonstrate that it is compliant. It is not just technical competence, it is communication competence. When the building safety regulator reviews your submission, they don't know you or your project. They don't know where it is or why it needs remediation. And that is why they are asking guidance through how you satisfied yourself that the design is compliant. And that's exactly what good storytelling does. Show them your building. Use a 3D view to highlight which parts are not compliant and why they are being replaced. Then show what's going in instead. A short, clear executive summary with annotated diagrams or a base study goes a long way. With the backlog they are facing, reviewers just want to make a decision, approve or reject, as quickly as possible. It's much harder to reject a submission when it's easy to understand. One of the most common reasons Gateway 2 submissions are rejected is not enough information. Often applications focus only on the fire safety sections of the building regulations, that's part B, and forget about everything else. Take remediation projects, for example. The high-performance combustible insulation being removed has better thermal performance than new non-combustible mineral wool that replaces it. So is the new build-up compliant with the energy efficiency? That's part L of the building regulations. Mineral wool insulation is also much heavier. And the new cladding may be too. Is the existing metal stud wall strong enough to take the extra weight? Has the corrosion weakened it over time? That is part A, structural safety. Have you checked for the toxic materials of the existing building? And have you confirmed that the new materials aren't toxic either? You need to show that you've considered this. That's part D. There are 17 parts in total. Gateway 2 expects you to show that you've considered every one of them, not just fire. The regulator does not care if, say, replacing the windows isn't part of your fire remediation scope, but they will care if the retained glass is unsafe, like annealed monolithic glass panes externally at height. They are non-combustible. Mention it. Show that you've checked it. Another common reason for rejection is when enough information is submitted, but it's the wrong kind of information. We call this a design dump. That is when hundreds of unorganized files are uploaded, drawings, calculations, product brochures with no structure or cross-references. This is an immediate red flag. It tells the reviewer that the team might not understand what they are submitting. And from that moment, their job becomes very simple. Find the first few inconsistencies, and that's enough reason to reject. For example, wind calculations show one load, but the cladding subframe is calculated for a smaller load. Or someone uploads a sales brochure instead of a test certificate. A design dump sets you up to fail. It makes the reviewer look for reasons to reject instead of trying to understand your building and your proof of compliance. And I don't blame them. Gateway 2 isn't about just design, it's about proving that the finished building will be safe when it's occupied. The building safety regulator looks for evidence that you've thought ahead, how you will collect proof as the project moves towards Gateway 3. So start from the end. Ask yourself, what will the final evidence look like? Then show at Gateway 2 how you'll get there. For example, you cannot do a pull-out test before the concrete slab is built or exposed. But you can explain how those results will be gathered and what will you do if the structure doesn't meet expectations. The same applies to all common unknowns, like when remediation reveals that an existing stud frame isn't strong enough for new cladding. Anticipate those risks, explain your strategy. Create contingency design, for example, adding an extra angle between tracks if the stud will be found to be missing. Or submit a contingency design option for floor-to-floor -floor spanning profiles. Demonstrate how you'll manage risk before it appears on site. 
During my career, I had the pleasure of going through several legal disputes, from minor adjudications to full high court cases. And they've taught me the most valuable lesson about preparing documentation. When you're preparing a gateway to submission, or in fact any technical document, imagine it will be read by a judge. A judge who knows nothing about you, nothing about how a construction industry works or about facades, and who has only a few hours to read your documents before the hearing. Your submission must be clear, concise, and easy to follow, not a chaotic design dump. It's completely fine to use 3D models and diagrams to make your point clear. Avoid jargon when you can, and if you have to use acronyms, explain them. For example, instead of saying EPDM, say Interface Vertical Membrane. In fact, don't use EPDM at all. Ethylene propylene diene monomer is combustible and may not be suitable for a high-rise residential building. I personally prefer to start every calculation or technical report with an executive summary. It includes both the introduction and the conclusion written in simple terms. It explains why the document is needed, what the results mean for the project, and which member of the design team should rely on it. The reviewer will not read and check the entire document anyway. If you prepare your calculation or report for a hypothetical court judge, you'll be surprised how crystal clear it becomes for any reviewer. And I always remind our students, competent people do not hide behind acronyms or technical jargon. If you can't explain something in simple terms, you probably don't understand it well enough.